welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलन जगत चरी करति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर फोकस्ड ऑन द स्टडी ऑफ the three types of samasas namely avyayi bhava bahuvrihi and dvandva in the first course on samasa in paninian grammar we have dealt with in detail the tatpurusha samasa which is by far the largest umbrella of the samasas in sanskrit the theoretical background for all the four types of samasas is same and therefore we have revisited several aspects when we studied the theoretical background in this course as well so we studied the theoretical background of the process of compounding involving the semantical the semantic relatedness then we also studied the process of derivation of the compound step by step each step generated by certain sutra in paninian grammar after that we started studying the avyayi bhava samasa we noted down the general features of the avyayi bhava samasa first and then we directly started studying the sutra prescribing the avyayi bhava samasa the avyayi bhava samasa in general can be represented by this particular equation namely x plus y where x and y are two independent separate entities in terms of the word form as well as the meaning these two entities are semantically related and then the speaker decides to merge these entities together to form one unit in terms of the word form as well as the meaning now this one unit is x y and in them x is highlighted with the bold letters primarily to highlight the fact that x becomes the head of that one unit in terms of the word form as well as the meaning in fact in case of the avyayi bhava samasa we also saw that the examples that we have studied have avyayas in place of x and then because of this head in terms of the word form the entire avyayi bhava samasa also becomes an avyaya that is what is reflected also in the name of the samasa namely 
अव्ययी भाव अनव्ययम अव्ययम भवति समथिंग दैट इज नॉट एन अव्यय फॉर एग्जांपल वाई मर्जेस विद द अव्यय दैट इज एक्स एंड देन एक्स वाई बोथ बिकम अव्यय एंड आल्सो द मीनिंग मीनिंग ऑफ एक्स बिकम्स द हेड let us briefly look at the treatment of avyayi bhava samasa in the ashtadhyayi the sutras prescribing the samasa or samasa vidhayaka sutras they all fall in 2.1 and 2.2 of the ashtadhyayi the bunch of sutras prescribing the avyayi bhava samasa begin with 2.1.5 the sutra is avyayi bhavah and continue up to anya padarthe cha saudnyayam that is 2.121 and 2.122 is tatpurushah avyayi bhavah gets cancelled by tatpurushah as far as the meta language of panini is concerned so this is a section within ashtadhyayi prescribing avyayi bhava samasa then we have another small section in 5.4 from 5.4.107 up to 5.4.112 this section prescribes the end of the samasa suffix samasanta pratyaya vidhayaka sutras these are and then we have swara vidhayaka sutra the sutra which prescribes the accent on the avyayi bhava samasa for example 6 to 121 This is how, in the Ashtadhyayi, Avyayi Bhava Samasa is mainly treated. We started studying this big sutra, a 2.1.6, namely Avyayam, Vibhakti, Samipa, Samruddhi, Vridhi, Artha Bhava, Atyaya, Asamprati, Shabda Pradur Bhava, Paschat. यथा आनुपूर्वीय योगपद्य सदृश्य संपत्ति साकल्य अंतवचनेशु वी से दैट देर आर टू पदर्स इन दिस सूत्र अव्ययम इज द फर्स्ट पद एंड द रिमेनिंग वन इज द सेकेंड पद एंड दिस सेकेंड पद कंसिस्ट ऑफ द सेमेंटिक कंडीशंस इन विच दिस कंपाउंड हैपन्स अव्ययम इज मेन्शन इन द प्रथमा विभक्ति therefore it becomes upasarjana because of prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and therefore it occupies the initial position of the samasa so the meaning of this particular sutra is vibhaktyadishu artheshu vidyamanam avyayam subantam samarthena subantena sah samasyate avyayi bhavascha समासो भवति एनी इनडिक्लाइनेबल सुबंत डिनोटिंग द सेंस ऑफ विभक्ति एट्सेट्रा इज कंपाउंडेड विथ एनी अदर सेमेंटिकली रिलेटेड सुबंत एंड द रिजल्टेंट कंपाउंड इज कॉल्ड अव्ययी भाव वी ऑल्सो नोटेड डाउन सेवरल सेमेंटिक कंडीशंस stated in this sutra amongst which we shall be dealing with these in the present lecture vibhakti that is case ending but what it means is the meaning of the case ending that is added after a nominal root or pratipadika as well as after a verbal root that is dhatu to make it a pad this is the meaning of the word vibhakti samipa is the other 
semantic condition which means proximity near or close samriddhi means prosperity or welfare and vriddhi means failure loss or want of prosperity let us deal with each one of them one by one so the first semantic condition is vibhakti vibhakti means case ending as a semantic condition the meaning of the case ending is what is intended a case ending or a vibhakti is a pratyaya is a suffix added after a nominal root or pratipadika as well as after a verbal root namely dhatu to make it a pad thereby making it eligible for the use in the sentence that is an important function of the suffix called vibhakti the meaning that this set of suffixes convey is primarily relational the interrelating these meanings of one one nominal root pratipadika with a verbal root dhatu and two one nominal root pratipadika with another nominal root or pratipadika this is how the vibhaktis interrelate the meanings that of one pratipadika with dhatu or one pratipadika with another pratipadika in the present case however the semantic condition is not the interrelation between two padas it is just the meaning of one vibhakti associated with the nominal root or pratipadika so we have pratipadika plus sup which becomes a pad to be used in a sentence now this pratipadika plus sup corresponds to pratipadika artha that is the meaning of the pratipadika and the vibhakti artha the meaning of the vibhakti in this case sup so in paninian grammar where each sentence is segmented into padas and each pad is segmented into prakriti and pratyaya pratipadika as a prakriti and sup as a pratyaya this is one type of prakriti pratyaya bhava which generates padas and as we have already seen sup supasah is the basic condition necessary condition for the process of compounding to take place and therefore we will talk about sup only when we talk about the compound process so pratipadika plus sup is the prakriti pratyaya vibhaga of the pad corresponding to the pratipadika artha the meaning of the pratipadika plus the vibhakti artha namely the meaning of the case ending thus this condition vibhakti seems to be an exception to the general principle of samarthya where primarily two meanings when interconnected through interconnected words become eligible to undergo the process of compounding and these two meanings are the meanings of the two different vibhaktis and derive an output in the form of a nominal root or pratipadika so this condition provides an exception to the general principle of samarthya which is at the base of the process of compounding 
here what happens is there is only one pada. There aren't two padas and two sups. There is only one pada, so there is only one sup. And the meaning of the vibhakti therein, that is the sup therein, gets represented by an indeclinable or an avyaya like prati, anu, yatha, etc., which is obviously related to the meaning of the nominal root to which it is attached or pratipadikartha. In this particular condition, this indeclinable gets compounded with the related nominal root or pratipadika and this is what is the avyayi bhava samasa. Let us take an example. Let us take an example. The meaning to be conveyed is in the soul. And the laukika vigraha is atmani. You see, there is only one pada, atmani. Where the pratipadika is atman, meaning the soul, and ni is the pratyaya, which is a sup, so that is a vibhakti, which means adhikarana, which gets represented by the word in, in English. So atmani means in the soul. Now, this suffix ni and its meaning namely adhikarana, gets represented by an avyaya like adhi. As far as this particular sutra 216 is concerned, and then we get the alaukika vigraha as adhi plus su plus atman plus ngi. And in this stage, we also get the samasanta suffix touch at it. by the Sutra 5.4.108. Now, in this particular stage, the Sutra 2471 applies and deletes both the sups. So we have Adhi plus 0 plus Atman plus 0 plus A. Then we have Adhi plus Atman plus A, after which the T part of Atman, namely An, gets deleted on account of 6.4.144 and so we have Adhi plus Atm plus A. Then at the end we apply the Sandhi rule, Iko Yadanchi 6177, and then we get Adhya Atma, Adhyatma as the finally derived compound output meaning Atmani. Now this particular Pratipadika, when becomes part of the sentence, Obviously, we add supratyaya to it and then, in general, by the Sutra 2482 of Yayadap Supaha, this su would be deleted. So, we will get Adhyatma plus zero, but there is an exception. In case of the Avyai Bhava Samasa ending in short a, A 2.4.83 and 2.4.84 apply and generate exception forms 
by not deleting the vibhakti. This is a peculiar form. And so, let us study these two sutras quickly to understand what happens in case of an avyayabhava samasa which ends in short a. So, 2.4.83 is Navyaibhavad Atomtva Panchamyaha. Navyaibhavad Atomtva Panchamyaha. So, the meaning of this sutra is Na Avyaibhavad Ataha Am Tu Apanchamyaha. We note that in this particular sutra, there are two sentences. First one is Ataha Avyayi Bhavatna, and the second one is Tu Apanchamyaha Am. The first sentence is Ataha Avyayi Bhavatna, and the second sentence is Tu Apanchamyaha Am. What it means is the following S1, namely Ataha Avyayi Bhavatna, means Adantat avyayi bhavat supo luk na. Since ataha qualifies avyayi bhavat, due to the meta rule, ataha gets transformed into adantat. Supaha is the word that is continued, and luk is another word that is also continued from the previous sutra. And so, therefore, this is a negation of the deletion of sup immediately after an avyayi bhava samasa which ends in short a. So, SM1 is that sup immediately after an avyayi bhava samasa ending in short a is not deleted. And now S2 is to Am apanchamyaha. Now that can be expanded by saying tu panchamim bina supaha am adeshaha. Supaha is continued from the first sentence and also the previous sutra. And am is obviously there in the sutra. So we have this meaning tu panchamim bina supaha am adeshaha. What, is, what it means is that Rather, except the fifth case, it, that is sup, is substituted by am. So, these are the two sentence meanings and we repeat. The first meaning is, sup immediately after an avyayabhava compound ending in short a is not deleted. And the second meaning is, rather except the fifth case, it, that is a sup, is substituted by am. So we have adhyatma plus su. Su is the prathama ekavachana. Since adhyatma is a samasa, a vyayibhava samasa, and it ends in short a, now therefore the sutra na vyayibhava atom pancamyaha applies and substitute su by am. So we have adhyatma plus am. Then we apply the sandhi rules and we get the finally derived subanta adhyatmam. On the other hand, if we have adhyatma plus ngasi, which is a fifth case singular suffix, panchami ekavachana, what happens is that the same sutra says that apanchamya am. So it negates the am substitution to the panchami vibhakti pratyaya. So then what happens is this ngasi gets substituted by at by another sutra ta ngasi ngasam inat syaha. So we have adhyatma plus at and then by the Savarana Dirgha Sandhi, we get the form Adhyatmat. 
in adhyatmat you don't get adhyatmam after having studied the sutra navyai bhava datom tvavanchamya let us also study the sutra tritiya saptamyor bahulam 2484 and supo look continues in this sutra what this sutra means is that sup of third and seventh triplet that is tritiya and saptami vibhakti which comes immediately after an avyay bhava compound ending in short a is optionally deleted once again sup of third and seventh triplet that is tritiya and saptami vibhakti coming immediately after an avyay bhava compound ending in short a is optionally deleted what it means is that there are two up two forms one where sup is deleted and the other one where the sup is not deleted so here we have adhyatma plus ta this is the tritiya ekavachana and then the optional form would be where ta is substituted by ina by the sutra tanga singa sam inatsya and so we'll get adhyatma plus ina and we be, when we join them together by the guna sandhi we'll get the form adhyatmena and optionally the am substitution will take place and we'll get the form adhyatmam similarly in saptami when we have adhyatma plus ngi which is 7 slash 1 that is saptami ekavachana we'll have adhyatma plus e then we apply the guna sandhi and we get the form adhyatme and the optional form would be adhyatmam these are varied optional forms exceptional forms of the avyay bhava samasa ending in short a this is what is represented on this particular slide which we studied previously as well so if you look at the cases and the words which are marked in black color you will notice that they have only pratidinam as a form but in tritiya panchami and saptami we also have a form which is marked by other color especially in tritiya and saptami we find both the forms pratidinam as well as pratidinena as ekavachana pratidinam as well as pratidinabhyam as dvivachana and pratidinam and pratidinaihi as bahuvachana and in saptami we have pratidinam plus pratidine as optional forms pratidinam plus pratidina yoho and pratidinam as well as pratidineshu in case of panchami sup is not to be substituted by am so first of all sup is not deleted neither it is it substituted by am so we have pratidinat pratidinabhyam and pratidinebhya as forms of panchami remember this happens to only those avyay bhava samasas which end in short a and not to the other samasas let us take another example if the meaning to be conveyed is in the female the laukika vigraha vakya is striyam which is the locative singular of stri then we have the avyaya adhi expressing the meaning of adhikarana for which locative case is used so adhi will get compounded with the pratipadika stri so we have adhi plus su plus stri plus ni 
then by 2471, which is Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho, both the Sups, namely Su and Ni, they get deleted. And so we have Adhi plus 0 plus 3 plus 0. And then we get Adhis 3. After we get this, we apply 2418 Avyayi which declares that Avyayi Bhava Samasa is neuter. And then 1247 applies, which says Raspo Napum Sake Pratipadikasya, which shortens the long E in the words 3 to a short one. So then finally derived output of the compound process is Adhis 3 with a short E at the end. And its forms will be like this. Just as in Yatha Shakti, we have no variation. We always delete the Vibhakti after it by the Sutra of Vyayadap Supaha. Same thing we do with Adhistri as well. Its form has got no variation at all. Let us now look at the usage of these samasas in actual sentences. Chaitanyam adhyatmam vartate Animatedness rests in the soul. Here adhyatma is indicating the location of Chaitanya. Similarly, Pratidinam Suryaha Udeti, sun rises every day. So, Pratidina is also indicating the location of Surya in temporal terms. Adhistri Shaktir Vartate, strength lies in the female. Once again, Adhis 3 acts as the qualifier of Vartate. Yatha Shakti Karyam Karoti Saha. He works in accordance with his capability. So here Yatha Shakti is an Avei Bhava Samasa. Shaktim Anatikramya. This is linked with the verbal action. It also qualifies it. Now next, we study the other conditions stated in the same sutra, how the processing of the Avei Bhava happens with remaining semantic conditions, how the process progresses to derive the final output in the form of a nominal root or Pratipadika. These are the texts referred to Thank you very much.